This is a screenshot taken from the video from the Texaco. It was a surveillance camera that captured the exterior of the Texaco station. This would be the gas pumps that were closest to 330 McDaniel Street. The timestamp in the lower on the video is 6.41 p.m. and 58 seconds. Literally, it's 18.41.58, but that's 24-hour time, so it's 6.41 p.m. and 58 seconds. Okay. And um, is there a vehicle, uh, do you, or do you see the vehicle, I guess that's in the center of State's Exhibit 591Y? Uh, yes, I do. And uh, through... I guess your investigation, um, can you tell the jurors uh, what you're able to determine, uh, what type of vehicle that is? 2001 Pontiac Bonneville, gray in color. And in conjunction with all the things that we've described that you've reviewed, the statements, the call detail records, um, the video surveillance, uh, I know you briefly spoke about it, but did you also review different social media uh, accounts and uh, photographs as it relates to uh, some of the individuals, specifically here, Mr. Bradford, that uh, we've described previously. Yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors, um, in uh, your review of Mr. Bradford's um, social media and uh, contained uh, in previously admitted exhibits, states exhibits 360Y through 363Y, um, what you found uh, in Mr. Bradford's uh, social media that caught your attention. He often uh, posed in photos with a 2001 Pontiac Bonneville. I mean, he'd be leaning up against it, et cetera. It looked like it was just, it was just a car that he was with frequently. Okay. And prior to your review of uh, Mr. Bradford's social media account and determining, seeing these photographs with him uh, with standing next to or near a Pontiac, had um, the Pontiac uh, that's contained in States Exhibit 591Y, act, I, I guess, been an integral part of your investigation at that point? Well, not, not integral, no. Okay. Was it something that you, um, was it something that you found or didn't find relevant uh, until you uh, reviewed uh, Mr. Uh, Bradford's uh, social media accounts? Sustained. Can you? Well, let me ask you this question. Was, well, just tell the jurors uh, after reviewing or, or finding these photographs uh, of Mr. Uh, Bradford uh, and the Pontiac, how uh, you were able to um, use that to forward your investigation. Okay, so I had the tower data for Mr. Bradford's phone that placed him in the area of the crime scene from 7.11 p.m. to 7.19 p.m. I had calls from the jail to Bradford, Mr. Bradford. I also had these pictures um, from his social media that I found that showed him with a Pontiac Bonneville. Now, Bradford was not known, he was not in any of the documents that I obtained from the Atlanta Police Department. As far as I knew, he was unknown to the investigation entirely. So I was trying to figure out who this Mr. Bradford was, you know, why all of, I had this data that, we, you know, this information was made it appear that he was somehow would at least know something about what I was looking into. And so when I went back and looked at the video and I saw this, 2001 Pontiac Bonneville pull up to the gas pump. It's, you know, that's when it clicked. Uh, and I, I, I started paying particular attention to the surveillance video from the Texaco station. Okay. And Mountain States is at 598Y. Can you describe to the jurors uh, what they're looking at and um, the relevance it was uh, to your a part of the investigation and working on this case? So 598Y is a picture from Mr. Bradford's Instagram page. Um, and it is one of a few photos that showed him next to a Pontiac Bonneville, like I testified to previously. And uh, that was, I obtained that photo around the time that I identified his phone number and got his phone records and tower usage data that placed him in the area. The crime scenes I testified to previously. And uh, the photograph that's uh, next to him standing in, uh, I, next to the uh, Pontiac, can you describe to the jurors uh, where that's from. There's two photos uh, contained within. How are they relevant to each other? Well, the one on the right is a, a 
still shot from the surveillance footage from the night of the murder okay. from the Texaco station. And um, can you tell the jurors in your review of the video surveillance, um, you said uh, in States Exhibit 591 why that that Pontiac arrived at, at, to the Texaco at what time? At 6.41 p.m. And can you tell the jurors uh, in your uh, review of the surveillance uh, how long in total uh, was uh, that Pontiac uh, seen on the video surveillance? If I may re refer to my reports, I get the numbers. If it will help refresh your recollection. Yes, just look up when you're done. So it was there. The Pontiac was in view of the surveillance cameras at the Texaco station when it pulled up into the pump at 6.41 p.m. and until it drove away from the station at 7.17 p.m. So fair to say reviewing your report helped refresh your recollection as to how long it was there? Yes. Okay. And uh, you said it was roughly uh, 40 minutes? Yeah, about that. And can you tell the jurors in your review of Mr. Bradford's uh, call detail uh, records, uh, was that consistent uh, with uh, him being, or were they consistent uh, with him being uh, in the area uh, of uh, the Texaco off of Cleveland Avenue for roughly uh, 40 minutes? Yeah, his, yes, his phone traveled to the Texaco off of Cleveland Avenue after it departed the area, or not, excuse me, the are you talking about the McDonald's? No, so you just described uh, to the jurors, um, let me rephrase my question. So that's the you saw the Pontiac remain at the Texaco for roughly uh, 40 minutes. You remember saying that? Yes, from, yes. 41 to, I think you believe, uh, 717? 641 to 717, correct. And uh, can you tell the jurors, in reviewing um, Mr. Uh, Bradford's call detail records and the activity on his phone uh, during 6, uh, 11, and uh, 717, um, were they consistent with him being in the area of the Texaco during that time period? At, Mc, at the Texaco at Northside Drive and McDaniel Street, yes. His phone pinged in that area from 711 to 719. It utilized the tower, so it didn't ping at the tower that entire time. But the time frame that his phone did ping at the tower, off the tower and sector that serviced that general area was encompassed you know, by the surveillance footage. Let me ask you this question. Was his phone or was there activity on his phone um, during that entire uh, period of time or were there times where uh, his phone wasn't utilizing uh, a tower? Well, it, his phone, it wasn't connected to the tower the entire time as if it was like streaming data or something like that. Or if it was, I didn't get any records that indicated that. It was only used, uh, it only connected to the tower to uh, when it sending or receiving a phone call. Okay. And uh, as uh, a part of your investigation, did you also uh, review uh, or look uh, into uh, the social media uh, accounts or the Twitter account uh, for Mr. Uh, Kendrick? Yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors um, in State's Exhibit I believe it's 524Y. Um, was this a photograph that you located uh, from uh, the Twitter account of Mr. Kendrick? Once it gets up there. Oh, there we go. It, yes, yeah, it, it is. There's a uh, and I don't, yeah, I don't know that's part of the exhibit because I seem to remember this, this gray bar going across the screen with the other exhibits as well. Yeah, now it's moved. Uh, but yes, I, I do recognize that. That's an image from Mr. Kendrick's Twitter account. Okay. And uh, can you tell the jurors, um, was there anything about the, the jacket that Mr. Kendrick is wearing in State's Exhibit 524Y that you, after seeing this and also reviewing uh, the video surveillance uh, that um, was uh, helpful to your investigation. So yeah, the interior surveillance from the Texaco, the, at 641, the Pontiac 2001 Bonneville pulls up to a pump and the front seat passenger exits the vehicle and walks into the convenience store attached to the Texaco. And in so doing, came in very close proximity 
to an interior surveillance camera. And so this footage revealed the outfit donned by the front seat passenger. And that image from the Twitter page that you just displayed on the monitor behind me or the television behind me, that man, Mr. Kendrick from the Twitter page, was donning what appeared to be the same jacket as the man from the video, the surveillance video from the Texaco. And uh, is that what we're looking at, uh, the comparison that you just described that you did in State's Exhibit 593Y? That's the, cons yes. And can you tell the jurors, uh, the, the photograph, I'm, we're looking at it on the left-hand side uh, from the convenience store, can you tell the jurors uh, the time period in which uh, that photograph or that screenshot would have uh, captured? It was very shortly after the uh, Pontiac Bonneville arrived on scene. If you would like the exact, matter of fact, it was, it, I have, I've just looked at my report to refresh my recollection about this. It was actually at 6.42 p.m. Okay, and uh, can you tell the jurors uh, in the photograph to the right um, uh, from Mr. Kendrick's Twitter account, uh, what time uh, that photo uh, of Mr. Kendrick was posted and on what date? It was, po it was uh, posted on January 10th, 2015, as you can see there, because I, I testified about this previously. Uh, I moused over the date, and uh, that made uh, the time pop up, and the time is 7.35 p.m. Now, as you uh, continued to review the video surveillance, uh, can you tell the jurors um, did the individuals that you saw uh, I guess exit and enter uh, the Pontiac uh, later interact uh, with uh, another sedan? Yes. And uh, in State's Exhibit 594Y. And here I thought the screenshots would be less difficult than the freezing video. Objection, Your Honor. This is cumulative of prior testimony that we've had at least once, if not twice, in this case. Any response? I mean, there's been no... Uh, is this going to be a comparison? Yes. Okay. Overruled. Now, um, can you tell the jurors, um, were you able to, uh, uh, I guess using your number of years of experience, I'm able to determine uh, the type of vehicle uh, in which um, we're seeing depicted uh, in front of the uh, Pontiac in the middle of the screen. The Volkswagen CC VR6 Sport. Okay. And when you previously testified, uh, you talked about uh, someone you had, um, I guess a name that you uh, had come across during your investigation, Miss uh, Ariel Bax? Yes. And uh, can you tell the jurors, from <coughs> getting uh, her name, were you able to use uh, public databases to determine any vehicles registered uh, in her name? Uh, yes, I was. And can you tell the jurors uh, what type of vehicle was registered uh, Ms. Back's name um, during this time period of uh, January 10th, 2018? Vol the Volkswagen CC VR6. Okay. And um, in your review of... Um, the make and model and year that Ms. Bax had was the vehicle consistent with what we're looking at uh, in State's Exhibit 3, excuse me, 5, 9, uh, 4Y. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, you also uh, talked about uh, previously a, an individual, Ms. Uh, Kenya Morton. Yes. And can you tell the jurors... Um, why you looked uh, into Miss um, Morton as it relates to this investigation? I'll object to the uh, reasoning behind what this witness is doing otherwise. Sustained. Can you rephrase? That? Yes. Um, in the, the phone calls uh, that you reviewed um, and have described today for Mr. Kendrick, um, did Mr. Kendrick place any calls uh, to Miss uh, Morton? Yes. And uh, through uh, you are listening uh, of the calls and your investigation. Um, were you able to determine how uh, Mr. Kendrick and Ms. Morton uh, were associated or knew each other? Romantically involved. 
it's a review of phone calls that are uh, in evidence. And also speculation, Your Honor. Sustained. It's uh, well. Without telling me what the association was, were you uh, able to see several calls between Ms. Morton and Mr. Kendrick? Yes. Okay. And um, in fact, uh, in a uh, one of the phone calls uh, that you've that you listened to and uh, has been admitted into evidence as it relates to Mr. Uh, Arnold, uh, did you hear Miss um, um, Morton in? One of the phone calls. Yes. And can you tell the jurors um, the date of the phone call in which you uh, heard uh, Miss Morton in the background? January 10th, 2015. What time? 7.42 p.m. Okay. And uh, that time in relation to uh, how was that time, the 7.42 p.m. that you heard Miss Morton in the background uh, related to or uh, the time in which Mr. Uh, Donovan Thomas uh, was shot and killed? Well, the 911 call is placed contemporaneously with the shooting, and that 911 call is placed at 7.22 p.m., so that call was 20 minutes after the 911. On the what? Sustained. I guess I'm, I, I, I need clarity. I'm, I'm not certain it's the contemporaneous. Con as, as I know what I it means. I don't know if he is able to testify from anything that it was contemporaneous with the murder. I think that's what the objection is to. Is that right? That, that, I mean, he can testify to what time the 911 call was. I, I'll refrain. Sustained. Agreed. I'll ask a, I'll ask a different question. Uh, Mr. Sprinkle, you said the 911 call was at one time? 7.22 p.m. And the call in which you heard Ms. Morton's uh, voice and uh, reference to her uh, name uh, was at one time. What time? 7.42 p.m. Okay. And during that same phone call, um, was there reference to um, Ms. Uh, Ariel or Ari? That I don't recall. Okay. And... Um, Well, let me ask you this question. Shortly after um, the Volkswagen uh, in State's Exhibit uh, 494Y uh, arrived at the gas station, uh, can you tell the jurors um, and a previously admitted in, I believe they're before you, State's Exhibits 292YL through 292M, uh, can you tell the jurors uh, what time um, uh, another vehicle that you determined uh, to be related to your investigation arrived at that same Texco? 7.16 p.m. Okay. And um, can you tell the jurors, based on uh, the statement of Quindarius Zachary, uh, why that vehicle was uh, of interest uh, as you watched uh, the video surveillance from the Texco? Because it was an Infinity Q50. Okay. Now, can you tell the jurors um, during what time did that infinity arrive? 7.16 p.m. Okay. And uh, at the time um, that you uh, reviewed the video surveillance, um, can you tell the jurors, did members um, from the Pontiac uh, interact with um, the vehicle uh, depicted in uh, this state's exhibit? Yeah, yes. The, the man that occupied the front passenger seat and then – entered the store at 6.42 p.m. wearing the coat, he interacted with the person or persons occupying the infinity. And I apologize for the record. That's 292YL. Now, um, Mr. Sprinkle, uh, can you also uh, describe for the jurors, uh, did uh, an individual uh, get out of uh, the rear passenger area uh, of the Pontiac? Yes. And uh, can you explain to the jurors um, well, I guess can you explain to the jurors what you observed uh, that person I guess do? 
Objection, cumulative, best evidence. Sustained. Mr. Sprinkle, how long, uh, based on your review of the video surveillance, did uh, the infinity remain uh, within uh, the Texaco gas pump area? About, about a minute, if that. It, it, it pulled in at 716 and pulled out at 717. Okay. 